So this is Unit 8, Lesson 4, um, Equal Rights Under the Law, What You Need to Know About Sexual Harassment. Sexual harassment can be defined as unwelcome verbal, visual, or physical conduct of a sexual nature that is severe or pervasive and affects working conditions or creates a hostile work environment. Let's look at what this means. Unwelcome. In other words, no behavior is sexual harassment if it is welcome. For this reason, it is important that if someone's behavior is making you uncomfortable, you clearly communicate that the person should stop. You can tell the person to stop and, can, and you can communicate your message in writing or by your actions. Conduct of a sexual nature. Some of the behaviors that can be described as conduct of a sexual nature include comments about a person's body, body language, or clothing, sexual jokes, repeatedly asking a person out, asking a person for sex, or telling rumors about a person's personal or sexual life. Inappropriate touching of a person is conduct of, of a sexual nature. This includes kissing, hugging, any touching that a person indicates is unwelcomed. Looking up, looking up and down a person's body or making sexual gestures is an example of conduct of a sexual nature. Following or blocking a person is also an example of conduct of sexual nature. For example, standing in front of someone who is trying to pass through a doorway, displaying sexual posters, drawings, pictures, or screensavers is behavior that is sexual in nature. So is sending emails with sexual conduct, uh, content. Severe or pervasive. Severe means serious, and pervasive means the behavior happens repeatedly. A single incident is probably not sexual harassment unless it is severe. For example, a man's asking a woman out on a date once and having her refuse is not sexual harassment. Continuing to pressure her after she has clearly said she isn't interested or treating her badly after she refuses could well be sexual harassment. Affects working conditions or creates a hostile work environment. If repeated sexual comments make you so uncomfortable at work that your performance suffers, the sexual comments do affect your working conditions. If you are threatened with being fired, denied a promotion, given a poor performance evaluation, or asked to do less desirable work because you refuse sexual interaction with a supervisor, that is almost certainly sexual harassment. The supervisor's reaction to your refusal clearly cre creates a hostile work environment. There are federal and state laws to protect people from sexual harassment. Some of these laws only apply to businesses with 15 or more employees. Employers are usually required by law to prevent and stop sexual harassment. Sexual harassment laws protect students as well. A professor cannot sexually harass a student. Both men and women can be victims of sexual harassment, and both men and women can be guilty of sexual harassment. Sexual harassment can occur between members of the same sex. For more information, check the laws in your state or contact your human resources, HR department, or your Office of Student Affairs.